to day two of track means advent of cyber um day two is you is going to talk about um the use of http which is the the protocol most of the internet runs on um when you're when you're accessing web pages across the internet um and is also going to look at cookies um and how you can manipulate cookies as an attacker to to get your desired outcome so we're going to dive straight into the challenge section of of aoc day two so the first instruction is going to be talking about opening the static site. So to take a look at that, we're going to open the static site by clicking that tab. Um, we can see this is some sort of monitoring dashboard. So we can click complete at that task. So the next instruction asks us to register an account and verify the cookies using the developer tools. So we'll click the sign up button here, um, add a name. So we can call it um, something like John. Um, john123 is the password and john at john.com go once we create account once we create account we can see that we don't really have permission to register an account please contact an administrator for more assistance um, going back to the questions it asks us to verify the cookies using the developer tools in the browser so once we go back to the page um, the easiest way to access developer tools is right clicking, um, clicking inspect and going to application. So this is this view is specific to the Chrome developer tools, but other browsers have something similar where you're e easily able to view the cookies. Um, and then here you can see that there is a, a cookie registered here with the name username auth. There's a value, there's a domain, there's a path. And there, there are other, other values that correspond to the cookie. So it asks, what is the name of the new cookie that was created for your account? So we can see that the name here is user auth. The next question asks what kind of encoding was used for the was used for the value of the cookie. So if we click the, the value here and we can see the cookie value down here, um, for those of for those who are not familiar with this kind of data, this is what is usually called as hexadecimal encoding. Um, so hexadecimal encoding usually um, is a base 16 number used to identify um, how data is stored. Um, just, to, just to give a bit more clarity on that, a really easy way of identifying hexadecimal number is that hexadecimal numbers are made up of the digits zero to F. Um, where if we had to convert this to a normal decimal instruction, um, the range goes from zero to 15. And, and these numbers are usually usually repeated um, to, store, to store various values in decimal or ASCII. Um, but because, because the user value contains numbers from zero to F, this is how we can identify it's hexadecimal. Um, and because it is because it is hexadecimal, um, we can usually decode this value to a different form. Um, so hexadecimal can be converted either to decimal to store a number, or it can, can be converted to to ASCII um, to store text or or different kinds of data. Um, the easiest way to decode this kind of data is using is using a tool called CyberChef. Um, so CyberChef is really great because it allows you to create data. It allows you to do data manipulation across all different types of data. But in this case, we'll focus on the hex hexadecimal data. So what we'll do is we'll go over here. Um, before moving forward, it asked us to to use the to check what the encoding type was. So we'll try to see if that was correct. Yes, that looks like the data is correct. Now that the data is in hexadecimal, we'll go forward with, with decoding it. So we'll copy the input here. Um, you can see here on the left that there are various options we can select to decode the data because we know this is hexadecimal. We'll select the from hex, drag it here. Um, and you can see down here that this is actually changed. This has actually been decoded into into some sort of object. Again, for those of you not familiar, this is what um, th this object is what is known as a JSON object. Um, JSON is also known as um, as JavaScript object notation. Um, it's a very easy way to package up data to either send to an application or to receive from a server. Um, and then depending on the use case of that, either retrieve data from this JSON object or even carry out manipulations on it. Um, so if we go back to the questions, 
Um, what object form is the data of the cookie stored in? So we know that it's a JSON object, um, and you know that's correct. Again, for those of you who aren't familiar with JSON objects, um, an identifying mark of the JSON object is using the opening and closing curly brackets. So anytime you see data stored in, stored with an opening and closing curly bracket, and with, and with what is called a key and a value, that is usually a JSON object. So a key is just um, a name of a parameter, is just an identifier, and the value is the value corresponding to, to this identifier. So for example, the value corresponding to the company is the company name, which is the best festival company. The value corresponding to the username is John. Um, and, and this makes it slightly easier for you to identify JSON in the future. The next question asks us to manipulate the cookie and bypass the logging portal. What is the value of the administrator cookie? So from the task above, you may have noticed that you may have noticed that when you're when you're looking at cookies across various applications on the internet, it's very easy to change the data across the cookie and try access um, resources based on the value of the cookie. So in this case, um, we can try change the change the JSON object to to contain the username of admin. So if we change the input here, change the username to admin. Um, because this is now this is now JSON or it's now um, ASCII, we then want to convert this back to the hexadecimal format, which is what the cookie was originally stored in. So we'll drag the two hex recipe. Um, again, we want to remove the spaces because it's easier um, it's easier to, to deal with, and we want the format to be similar to what it was. So if we want to check this is right, we copy that here, click submit. Okay, now that we can see that the cookie is actually right, why don't we try to replace it within the application itself? So if we go back to the best festival company, um, go back to where our cookies are stored, double click the value of this cookie, paste that value of the cookie. Um, sometimes a refresh might work. So let's try refresh. In this case, it looked like the refresh didn't work. So why don't we try access the original root of the website, which is just the AOC cookies. So, which is great. So now that you can see, because we've passed on a different cookies, we get a different page from what was initially there. So if we had submitted the, the wrong cookie, we would have got on that um, registration or that login page, but now we've actually bypassed on um, that login page and got to the monitoring dashboard. So if we look to see what, if we look to see the other questions, what environment is not responding? So we can see that HR is marked with red, so we can try put HR here. And what team environment has a network warning? So again, we can assume red has issues, green works properly, and yellow is some sort of warning. So it looks like the application environment has, has a network warning. So if we click that, it looks like that was the correct answer. Um, so congratulations on completing the task. Um, hopefully you've understood how important cookie manipulation is as, as a security issue um, and something to keep in mind if you do application development, if you're working to develop an application that you need to um, make sure that you're not trusting data coming in from the cookie just because a user may be able to manipulate that um, to do various nefarious actions.